your recording is started. All right, Torrent Tigers, welcome back to uh, after spring break edition of TTN News 6. Hope you had a great spring break and looking forward to a strong finish to the school year. We're going to skip headline news today and we're going to get right into Chef's Corner with very own Mr. Terrence. Then we're going to go around town with Miss Connie. Mm -hmm. This day in history with Mr. Sam. Sports news with Mr. Eric. Weather outlook with Mr. Charles Newhouse. And mm -hmm. Pop Culture Insider with Miss mm -hmm. Ashley. Let's go. Mr. Terrence, mm -hmm. are you there? I am. Let's get your ABC mm -hmm. cards ready. Next slide, please, mm -hmm. sir. So, what is the bold cut? We're looking at A. Is it picture A or is it picture B? What do we see? Any guesses up here? I see an A from Charles, A from Connie's room, A from Shanna. Almost looks like Molly was holding up a B. A cold cut is picture A, not B, but you could get a cold cut if you're cutting into the cold cut itself. So hopefully you don't do that. Let's go to the next slide, please. Six. National cold cut day. Can you play that, can you play that video, sir? Mr. Terrence, is this correct? That's what I thought. I thought I updated it. Because I think we did this one before. If I delete these out of here. Let me, uh, I don't know how I could have gotten the wrong one, but. <laughs> Mr. Sam, is that right? Yes, that, that is correct. Okay. Oops. Okay, all right, guys. Yeah, these are definitely the older slides. Sharing mode. There should be something in there about sound. Share sound. Okay. Let's try and then you'll again. share from your computer. To celebrate National Cold Cuts Day, I made some sandwiches. Ah, it. Bite you, bitch. <sighs> I have a corned beef with this day. It is tea worse. I won't stand here and listen to you spam this horrible message. I'm going to pork roll. See you later, you old sausage. <laughs> yeah, okay, seriously, what kind of sandwich is it? <laughs> Turkey. That one? Sure. <laughs> Next slide, sir. Nope. Oops. <laughs> Yep, same old one. We have restaurant review of the week is Mike's Deli, downtown Chelsea, 22.9 miles from the Florence Center in downtown South Michigan. Uh, Wolverine specialize in sandwiches. Uh, fun fact, they use Zingerman's bread for their sandwiches. So if you're in the downtown Chelsea area, I highly recommend swinging by Mike's Deli. Back to you, sir. Might be an old slide, Mr. Terrence, but still looks great. Thank you, sir. I'd like to get down there sometime soon. All right. Moving on. It's time for Around Town with Miss Connie. Miss Connie, are you ready to share what's going on around town with us? Hi, it's Miss Kasha. I'm stepping in for Miss Connie today with this segment. Oh, great, Miss Kasha. Thank you. You're welcome. For April, we are talking about leisure and leisure is free time for all of our enjoyment. So these are some things that we can do in our free time. Um, the first picture in your top left is a picture of the all skate um, skating arena. Um, the picture below that is um, art downtown. 
so you can walk around downtown and there are downtown Jackson. There are lots of painted murals on the walls um, and lots to see downtown. There's a little park. Um, the middle picture is um, depicting a picture of some bikes, some people on bikes. There's lots of trails in Jackson that you can safely ride your bikes without traffic. And the picture on the right there is of the Cascade Falls. Now the falls don't open till May, but that's coming up real soon here. Next slide, please. We can enjoy uh, the parks um, and playgrounds. Those are the two slides that are on your um, left. Um, there's lots of nice parks in Jackson and there's um, some of them have playgrounds. The picture in the middle is uh, of Ella Sharp. Um, Ella Sharp has a park. They also have a museum. There's a planetarium over there. So there's lots of things to do at Ella Sharp. They've got ball fields. Um, there's a, like a driving range. Um, if anyone's into golf, lots of fun activities to do outside at Ella Sharp. And last but not least, the slide on your, or the picture on your right is of someone bowling. So there's another activity you can do in your leisure time. Um, so next week, we will stay tuned because we will find out what our friends like to do in their leisure time. So think about it. It doesn't even have to be one of these activities if you're into something else. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Ms. Kasha. Lots of exciting things to do in Jackson, especially as the weather's getting warmer. I know looking outside, uh, it, I just feel like getting out there and doing something. So hopefully you guys do too. All right. Well, it's that time again. It's time to find out what happened this day in history. It's this day in history with the one and only Mr. Sam. Mr. Sam, are you there? I am here. I am totally excited to share our historical facts for today. And of course, today is, of course, April 6th. I did get that date correct. Oh, 7th. Yes, it was there. I don't want the camera. All right, but anyway, I need to be able to see my face on here so I can see if I'm looking at everybody. All right, so we'll go ahead. As you can see, I've got some. I've got some glimpses of what we are going to be talking about. Oh my goodness, I have April 7th written right on the slide. <laughs> but as you see, we've got some different pictures and we'll be able to explain those a little bit more, especially that one that's located underneath my face being the Royale with cheese. You'll understand why we'll be talking about that today. So we'll, Mr. Eric, go ahead and slide us to the next slide and we will dive into some of the history that happened on this day. All right, we'll start off with our gentleman in the top left around we got them bordered in purple. This was in, on this day in 1795. France adopts the metric or the metric system, as we call it, which is a basic measurement of length, thanks to Jean Baptiste Joseph de Lambre. Yes, that is his full name. <laughs> but yes, he was the one who kind of pioneered the metric system. And that is why I included that picture of a Royale with cheese on our first um, on our first slide. And the reason for that is that's really in America, we call that a quarter pounder with cheese. But over in France and most of Europe, they don't use that same type of measurement system we do here in America. So that's why they call it a Royale with cheese because they call it a quarter pounder with cheese. Nobody would even know what that meant necessarily or very few at least. So cool little fact by, you know, Sean Baptiste Joseph Delombre. I like that last name. All right, but with that, we'll go ahead and we'll slide directly down and looking at this day in history in 1805, we've got Lewis and Clark expedition leaves Fort Matt. Oh, I have a typo. It's supposed to be Mandan beginning their journey to the Pacific. Now, of course, we all know about Lewis and Clark and how they traveled westward until they hit California. Of course, they didn't know all that land was there, but we have the two gentlemen, Lewis and Clark, that are pictured at the top, surrounded by yellow, but that young lady underneath, that is the one and only Sacagawea, Sacagawea, 
who was their Native American guide. Of, she was able to guide them and understand, I guess, the land um, that they were going, because this was before roads. They had to navigate through full forests. And of course, they needed ways to communicate with other Native American tribes. And actually, the Fort Mandan, um, that was actually named after the tribe that used to reside there, the Mandan uh, tribe. But of course, this was their second stop on their journey. They had left St. Louis and landed over in now Fort Mandan, which is just north of the Missouri River in, what did I put on, in South Dakota. Oh, I'm sorry, in North Dakota. So very cool stuff. And then of course their journey went on to where they finally settled out um, west. So pretty cool stuff. But we'll go ahead and slide over to our green icon. That gentleman right there is Mr. Booker T. Washington. Uh, 1940, the US Post Office issues the first post stamp of Afri African American educator Booker T. Washington. Of course, he was a big uh, pioneer. And of course, when you look at the time when he was a teacher, it wasn't that great of a time to be an educator, especially on the African American side. So, really, by him doing that, it did a huge. Um, it had a huge effect on our educational system as well as um, the culture for our African Americans during that time as well. So huge deal. And of course, to uh, commemorate him, they put him on a posted stamp, which we were able to see on that first slide that we had looked at. But now we'll go ahead and shift up to our orange sections, okay? Now this one's a little bit nitty gritty, okay? But it is a key part of our American history. So it is important to talk about it. But on this day in 1945, the Battle of Okinawa, which is over in Japanese, uh, Japan, uh, US planes intercept Japanese fleet heading for Okinawa on a suicide mission. Uh, super battleship Yamato and four destroyers are sunk. Now that is on the Japanese half. Uh, America did lose uh, one of their uh, bigger fighter ships, but that didn't happen on this particular day. Because this particular war, um, or I should say this campaign or battle, lasted from March 26th all the way to July 2nd. And of course, we were able to gain the upper hand. This was deemed as one of the, um, one of the bloodiest battles for World War II, just because of the high casualty on both ends. Um, Allied forces, which included American soldiers, we, we lost roughly 50,000 of our soldiers compared to uh, our Japanese and um, other adversaries um, who lost roughly around 100,000. But the most staggering fact about this is the civilians of Okinawa, they lost roughly around 100,000 civilians who were not involved with that war. And that was due to other reasons of starvation or uh, friendly fire from uh, either end. And of course, this, the biggest thing is 100,000 civilians in Okinawa, that's, that's about one quarter of their entire population. So in other words, you take it in four parts and break it down, that's how many. So that's why the, the death rate was so high. And of course, and it's mixed reasons why some of these uh, civilians did pass. So, but of course it was, you know, one of the, it was the last major battle of World War II. And then of course we know the, the bombings followed shortly after that. But yes, tried times, but of course that was kind of the, the, the last little check mark on, on that World War II battle. But of course, we'll go ahead and slide down to our red boxes, our last one today. Oh, can you jump back one more? Thank you. Now this one was in effect because of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, so in 19, on this day in 1968, riots continue in over 100 US cities following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. He was assassinated um, on April 4th. So these riots went on for days. And I'm not sure if you're able to read um, uh, some of that newspaper article from the Washington Post that was actually the cover page. They said 11,500 troops had confronted these rioters. Now, of course, that's not all in one place. 11,500 troops spread out throughout those 100 US cities. But within those three days of these riots occurring, over, it was like 2,680 something um, individuals were arrested during these times because it was, there was so much backlash 
over this. And of course, things did settle down. And then, of course, we were able to um, abolish some uh, unfair um, laws and rules that we had at that time because of that. So that was another massive impact on the American culture itself. And of course, and it did bring up a lot more awareness. But with all that, we'll go ahead and slide over to our one quiz question. You're only gonna need an A and B for this. And I'll go ahead and read our question out loud. It says, what form of measurement was adopted by France in 1795? Was it A, the metric system, or B, the guess and check method system? <laughs> so I'll, I'll restate that one more time. It says, what form of measurement was adopted by France in 1795? A, metric system, or B, our guess and check method system. Let me see. We've got Ms. Ash with, a, with an A, Mr. Eric with an A, Pastor with an A, Terrence with an A, Mr. Charles with an A, Molly, I'm thinking maybe an A. Oh, we got one from Margaret A. Oh, Mir Brashear, we got an A. What about you, Destiny? I just flipped you over, so I'm looking at you now. What do you think, girl? And we got an A. Excellent. So if you answered A, you are absolutely correct. The metric system was the system they adopted. The guess and check method, that's a different form of you know, things that we use in our everyday math. But all right, cool. So hopefully you liked our on this day in history for today and right back to you, Mr. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Wow, April 7th was a busy day in history. Pretty cool. A lot of great information there. Thanks, Mr. Sam. Okay, it's time for your sports news update. Let's get into it. Yeah, of course, we got some big news in sports. March Madness, if you've been following the brackets and watching the games the last couple weeks, big news is ba the Baylor Bears defeat Gonzaga Bulldogs 86 to 70 to take the NCAA Men's National Championship. Here's a little picture of a team celebrating with the National Championship trophy. Uh, quite, an, quite a tournament, quite an event. So it's nice to have the tournament back this year, uh, have some great basketball. Uh, we did have uh, Michigan make it to the Elite Eight, the only team in the Big Ten to get that far. So uh, it was a good, good season for Michigan, even though a little bit disappointing that they didn't go further into the tournament. On the women's side, sometimes a little overlooked, but uh, the women's national championship also going on at the same time. Uh, winners of the women's national championship, Stanford Cardinals. It was a heck of a game defeating... Razorbacks 54 to 53 right to the end nail biter win the NCAA women's national championship so exciting stuff on the women's side they got done about a week ahead of the men so uh sometimes it gets a little overlooked but uh, some great basketball there on the women's side too uh looking at uh local sports here just a little bit of a reminder we've we've got spring sports in session We've got baseball, boys golf, girls golf, only up north. Girls golf down here uh, in the lower peninsula takes place in the fall. But we do have spring golf in the UP uh, just because it gets it's a little too cold for women's golf in the UP that time of year, this time of year. Uh, or fall season, excuse me. Boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, girls soccer, softball, boys tennis, girls tennis, boys track and girls track and field all going on right now. Uh, so keep an eye out on those spring sports. You can see some of the final dates, uh, a lot of those being done, uh, kind of the end of the school year, right, right around the second week of June. Uh, we do have uh, finishing up, surprisingly, winter sports are still finishing up. Boys and girls basketball finals are set to take place over the next week here. We've actually got a local team. The Parma Western girls basketball team will be facing off against Portland at Van Andel Arena tonight in the uh, regional semifinals uh, for heading heading into the, the state state championship final. So you can see that 5.30 tonight live stream at WSD Panthers Sports. But, yeah, really exciting to have a local team uh, making it that far. My alumni. Yeah. Go Panthers. 
but for the most part, as far as NBA and NCAA basketball season is over, uh, so we're heading into a new season that is Major League Baseball. We got the Minnesota Twins taking on our Detroit Tigers. You can watch that game today at 110 on Fox Sports. And then just a final plug here, a uh, big tournament going on this weekend. Some people, um, uh, actually a lot of people say this is one of the biggest sporting events uh, of the year, very comparable to uh, even like the Super Bowl. But that is the Masters Tournament on the PGA Tour. That's going to fire up tomorrow through Sunday. Really exciting stuff. Uh, some, some fun golf to watch. A beautiful course in Augusta, Georgia. I got my, I'm going to be watching. I really enjoy it. You can see right here, I got my master's hat. I was able to go down in 2018 and I got to watch a practice round and seeing the course on TV, you cannot believe how, how beautiful it is till you actually stand on the grounds. It was an amazing opportunity. I will not forget, but uh, just uh, it's very cool to watch it on TV after I got the chance to go there. But haven't ever watched the Masters tournament. Uh, maybe you're not into watching golf, and that's fine. But turn it on a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful course, uh, beautiful event, and uh, maybe just check it out for a few minutes because it's quite a, quite a uh, thing to see. Okay, that's the end of our sports, but we're going to find finish with a sports question, sports trivia. Question is which team won the women's? NCAA basketball championship this year. Going to need your ABC cards. Remember, which team won the women's NCAA basketball? It's a little trick here. Is it A, the Stanford Cardinals? Is it B, the Detroit Tigers? Or was it C, the Baylor Bears? Go ahead and take your guess. Just says it is A, Stanford. Miss Margaret, A, Stanford. Mr. Sam says A. Mr. Terrence says A. SXI5 is A. Miss Ashley, A. We've got, looks like all A's on the board. Let me go through them and one more. Omir, A. Destiny, A. Yeah, that's right. You're all correct. Paid attention. It is A, the Stanford Cardinals. Very nice sports fans. Uh, hope you're excited for some spring and summer sports. Detroit Tigers baseball is going to be fun. PGA Tour golf. Get ready to go. All right, here we go. What time is it now? It's time for our local meteorologist, Mr. Charles, to give us our weather update. I'm looking out the window, and things have been looking beautiful this week. Mr. Charles, I hope you got more in store for us. It sure does, doesn't it, Mr. Eric? Thank you. Now we do, although it is looking very beautiful outside, we do have a theme today because with April, showers typically come May flowers. So uh, we do commonly see a lot of rain in the month of April. Uh, so we're gonna talk about some rain, uh, rain related topics today. Uh, but first I like our students to grab out their weather cards and make a prediction. Look out the window, let us know what you think the weather is like today before we check the actual weather I see. Miss Kasha throwing a beautiful sun up there for us. Oh, Miss Destiny, she's calling for some sunshine as well. What do you think, Omir? What do you think, Molly? Omir, I see you putting something up there. Sunshine, perfect. Well, Mr. Eric, if you don't mind hitting the question mark there, I also see yours, Molly, nice job. That'll take us to Jackson's weather today. And you know what? You guys are right. It is currently 76 degrees and sunny. We have a beautiful sun out in the sky today. Uh, peeking through our window, looks like there's not really many clouds out. Uh, if you don't mind scrolling down just a little bit, Mr. Eric, let's check out what the rest of the week is going to look like. Okay, there we go. Sunny at 79 and sunny today. We do have a few days of uh, some, some rain and thunderstorms coming up, um, both tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll see some, some rain, maybe a little bit on, 
on Friday, we've got some mostly cloudy situations going on. Um, perfect, Mr. Eric, thank you. If you don't mind heading back. And like I said, we are gonna have a, uh, a rainy theme today. So if you could click on uh, that, that cute little frog there, it'll take us to a little fun video to tell us what would happen if it never stopped. It's not that easy. Grammarly. How could that affect, what would that affect in our, in our world and our society? there. Welcome to Life Noggin. Good morning, folks. Day number 47 of constant rain all over the globe, and experts are now saying it may never end. Here at WLN News, we're wondering, what if it never stopped raining? Man, if only some show could explain this. Here on this blocky planet, it's been pouring for over a month, and it's wreaking havoc on society. Schools and hospitals are flooded, entire cities are without power, and we can't get where we need to go. Wait, animator, don't you control the weather here? Huh, well, can't argue with that. But besides the obvious, what are other implications of this never-ending rain? These massive downpours will have detrimental effects on plants, crops, and trees all over the world. The destruction of these plants impacts everything from food supplies to the amount of oxygen we have to breathe. As you know, plants absorb CO2 and convert it into breathable oxygen through a process called photosynthesis. About 30% of our oxygen comes from terrestrial plants, but when the soil is soaked to the point of no return and sunlight is is continuously blocked by clouds, plants can't get the nutrients they need to photosynthesize. This will kill the plants and leave more CO2 and less oxygen in the atmosphere. And without sunlight, the phytoplankton in the sea that currently provide over 50% of our oxygen will die off too. Anyway, less plants means less food. Many crops and livestock can't handle the extreme rain, so the amount of food we can produce will dwindle. I have a feeling this means we'll be eating a lot of rice, since it grows in fields of water. Sushi, anyone? Oh, okay, I guess not. Well, we'd probably want to avoid fish anyway, since extreme downpours like this flood pollutants into lakes, rivers, and local water supplies. These pollutants can range from sewage to heavy metals, and they harm marine life and contaminate our drinking water. This contamination can cause some pretty serious health issues. Dirty water can lead to hepatitis A, cholera, and typhoid fever. None of which sounds fun, or is fun. Plus, instances of malaria, dengue, and yellow fever all increase with floods and influxes of mosquitoes. And don't forget about all the mold that's undoubtedly growing in all of the flooded homes. Well, what about poor Mother Earth? How will she handle all this rain? Spoiler alert, not well. Torrential downpours like this cause horrendous deadly landslides all over the world. Landslides come in the form of rockfalls, mudslides, and basically any other form of earth falling down a slope. These can block roads, affect communication, and take down power lines. And these are just the effects of normal landslides. Who knows how bad they'll be if it literally never stops raining. But the natural disasters don't end there. It's been found that rain-induced erosion can loosen underground rocks along fault lines contributing to earthquakes. Now, this may be just a hypothetical situation, but global warming is worsening rainfall extremes and shifting weather patterns. We all need to make changes in our everyday lives to combat global warming and help ward off horrible scenarios like this. I don't know about you, but I would much rather bask in the sun. <sighs> oh, hey look, it's back. That's weird. Let us know what we should talk about next in the comment section below. Curious to know what would happen if the Earth ran out of food and water? Check out this video. So much of the groundwater we use... Thank you, Mr. Eric. And it's news like that that makes me even more grateful for the sunny day, for a sunny day like today. Uh, so if we go to the next slide. I have a quick question um, about the rain. Make sure we have our ABC cards ready. And the question is, which one of these tools would help you in a rainstorm? Is it A, a snorkel, B, an umbrella, or C, sunglasses? What do you guys think? Which would be the most helpful in a rainstorm? I see a B in the comments from Miss Shanna. Omir says B, Destiny says B, Molly says B. You guys are on fire. Lots of bees from all our teachers as well. You're right. 
an umbrella would be the most helpful tool out of those three for a rainstorm. <laughs> I like your, your depiction of an umbrella, Ms. Herrick. All right, if you don't mind going to the next slide. Uh, the interesting weather fact for the day, has anybody ever heard the, the, the term raining cats and dogs? Well, you know what? There have been instances of actual raining animals um, around the world. And I'm here to talk about it. We have a couple pictures on the next page and some of them are kind of frightening. The first one, for example, is raining spiders. And what happened was huge gusts of winds came in, picked up um, hordes of spiders and all their webs and they carried them along and it ended up creating like giant webs in the sky. And there's a picture of this on the next page. If you're scared of spiders, be warned. It's kind of creepy. Another one is instance, yep, right there. Uh, another one is as a uh, raining fish where a hurricane picked up fish from the ocean and proceeded to throw them through the sky into towns nearby. And there's just fish all over the ground. Also a picture of that on the next page. Um, then there's some temperature and climate climate related instances of, of raining animals. Uh, raining bats, for example, is when there was uh, extreme heat. I believe this one is in, was in Brazil. And it, the, the heat caused the bats to overheat, faint, and start falling from the sky. I don't think I would want to run into that. Um, on, the other, the, on the other side of things, raining iguanas. So it, it was a country that had sudden drop in temperature. And since iguanas are cold-blooded, uh, it, it, it caused them to uh, their body temperatures to, to lower to the point where they started dropping and falling out of trees. Uh, and then lastly, raining squids and jellyfish is when a nearby storm uh, picked up these squids and jellyfish out of the ocean, started throwing them through the sky. And there was an instance where I hit a fisherman in the head, knocking him unconscious on his boat. So um, I'm happy with a, a little light drizzle here in Jackson. I think we'll, we'll try to stick with that uh, for now. But if you go to the next page, Mr. Eric, you'll see pictures of some of these instances. Uh, in the top right, there's uh, what it looks like with the raining spiders. So those, these spiders were picked up by the gusts of wind and they created this giant web in the sky. Um, and then at the bottom is the picture of the, all the fish on the ground. So quite frightening. But that's gonna wrap it up for the weather today. Grab your umbrellas. Wow, Mr. Charles, you'll need more than an umbrella if those fish and spiders start coming down. Holy cow, yes, I'll take the light drizzle any day. Thank you, Mr. Charles, for that. Okay, it's time for our last segment. It's pop time with Miss Ash. Looks like she's got some tigers in the news too. I do. The big thing in pop culture right now has to do with our Detroit Tigers. So, Mr. Eric, will you go to the next page? Would you like me to start playing? On sky to right. Go. Deep and gone! Miguel Cabrera's 350th is a Tiger! Second base. Is a... <laughs> he he thought second. it was a double! <laughs> How about that? Awesome. On opening day Look at the Stonefield Stadium. Look at Betty. <laughs> oh my gosh. The outfielder couldn't. Miggy couldn't see it. He slid into second. We've got a whiteout. So this was a big thing that happened recently in um, Detroit. Miguel Cabrera actually scored the first home run of the Detroit season, but he also scored the first home run of the MLB season period. And it was his 350th as a Detroit Tiger. So it was a very special home run for him. So Mr. Eric, will you go to the next page and hit play?
So one of my favorite parts about baseball has to do with the mascots that the teams have. And this is the Houston Astros mascot, Orbit. And he is pretty famous for a mascot for being very silly. And in this video, he is attempting to go tiger hunting. He is trying to catch a Detroit tiger. <laughs> Mr. Eric, if you actually want to go to the next page. One of the things Orbit is really known for is he is known for being a dance mascot. And he is going to have a dance battle with another mascot. Thanks to Scout Dave. Stay on your feet, make some noise, and go buy a seven race t shirt launch brought to you by KM Frank's the official hot dog and sausage of the race. You wanna be tough, better do it, can't so beat it. You wanna be bad, just beat it. All right, next slide, Mr. Eric. And for our question, I want to know who, guys, instead of yes or no, it should be A or B. <laughs> who do you think would win a mascot dance off? Is it A, our torrent tiger, or is it B, orbit the astro? Who do you guys think? I see lots of A's, and Mr. Eric threw up a really quick B for Orbit the Astro. I think it'd be B, but I also think it'd be really fun to see our Torrent Tiger mascot do some dancing. So Miss Connie and I are thinking that we should write him a letter and try and outdance Orbit. What do you guys think? Should we do that? Yes or no? The teachers are saying yes. What do you think, Molly Des Omir? Des says yes. Des is always on board to pick on the Torrent Tiger with us. Omir says yes. All right, that's what we'll plan on doing. We'll work on our letters soon. Mr. Eric, if you can go to the next page, it's time to talk about our April birthdays. And on April 1st, we had Miss Shanna's birthday and Miss Mindy in Mr. Charles's room. Coming up soon on the 11th, we have Michael's birthday in Mr. Eric's room. And I think that's it for our April birthdays. If I missed anybody, let me know and we will add you to our next session of TTN 6. But we hope you all have the very best birthday from all of us here on TTN 6. And that is it for me, Mr. Eric. Thank you, Miss Ashley. What a great day to close this edition or a great section to close this edition of TTN News 6. Want to thank everyone for joining us back from spring break. And we hope you can get outside, enjoy some of the great weather, and enjoy some of the sporting events coming up this weekend. And look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. So thanks again, guys. Don't forget to go out there and roar. We'll see you later. Bye bye.